commencing operation celebration as in one earth day from now will mark this podcast's official one earth year of intercepting your radio waves and yet i still haven't heard back from any intellectual life other than the wonderful elephant i've made friends with those planets may still have more to offer my research will continue and your radio waves will still be intercepted hooray for you now let's tune in to the show Hello and welcome to the podcast where we are currently recapping the events of Transformers IDW 2005 continuity. I'm Onyx Prime with my two co-hosts here. Hi, I'm Compitron. Hi, I'm Kilobyte. Moving on with our comic discussion for today's episode takes us to IDW Transformers Punishment. And as always, spoiler warning. So if you haven't read it already, we recommend you go back, read the comics, then come listen to the podcast. Now, onwards with the podcast. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I have a special announcement. Happy one year, everybody. We've been a podcast for one whole Earth year since May 10th, 2021. Hooray. We've made it. Hooray. <laughs> Is there a vendor bot at the bar? Vendor bot, you, you think, right? Did you guys think... Uh, You'll be doing a podcast from one year from last year? No. It's, <laughs> I'm surprised it's been a whole year already. And thank you, listeners. Thank everyone who tunes in to listen to the show. We can't do it without you. Thank you so much. But, Kilo, what have your thoughts been over the last year? Oh, it's been a lot of highs and a lot of lows, but it's been a cool ride. <laughs> There's still plenty more, though, so... <laughs> hopefully it finishes with a bang yeah i mean i don't know i wasn't expecting it and then i just pulled up my calendar and saw it was may 10th and i'm like oh wow okay honestly i think one of my favorite things is this it, it doesn't feel like a year it feels shorter and um to be honest with you i'm hoping that it continues to feel short and sweet as we continue to do this What's that Earth saying? Uh, fun flies when you're having time? No, that's not it. Yeah, um, something like that. I feel like I have something backwards, but I don't know which one it is. Time flies when you're having fun. That's it, that, yeah. That, I think that's correct, yes. Fantastic. Shall we continue on with the show? Yeah. We should. Computron, do you mind telling us some facts? Yeah, so this one's a short one. There's a total of five issues uh, for this volume, and all five were released June 2014. Uh, the writer was John Barber, and the artist was Livio Remondelli. All right, some trivia. Issue 1, though not named until later in the miniseries, new Autobot character Fireball is based on Vroom, a bot who put in one previous appearance in IDW continuity in Spotlight RC, which he might not have survived. In Issue 2, Heavy Barrel and Skidmark... <laughs> Uh, the latter <laughs> name. Keep it together, <laughs> Keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> so the latter unnamed until issue five are straight continuity transplants of the two Cybertron mini cons of the same names. <gasps> Heavy Barrel has a flying alternate mode, though rather than the tank mode of his toy. In issue five, given the killer in this comic's motivation and modus operandi, the title of punishment would seem to be a reference to marvel comics own one man war on crime the punisher so i heard a, a gasping from from kilo yeah the <laughs> mini cons the more mini cons yes but then they're offline too so <laughs> <laughs> don't wanna be all by myself <laughs> anyway careful, careful. Mr. we're gonna get the mom done <laughs> <laughs> mr kilobyte do you mind giving us a short summary of these comics we'll do it and it is surely short so let's start with uh optimus prime's arrival on cybertron coincides with the aftermath of a decepticon triple homicide who could have done it Dun, dun, dun. We're about to find out, but 
<laughs> but this week's episode, we're giving a shout out to Hexamus, who plays the wonderful Spitfire Scorchfire Prime in our spin-off D&D series, Transform and Roll Out Rise of the World Killers. You may have also heard her voice in some of the ads we have midway through our episodes, such as an ad for Nightmare Fuel and the ad for McAdams Old Oil House. Thank you so, so much. You are the best. And listeners, you should definitely give her a follow. Her Twitter is HexamizArt. And thank you so, so much again. Beautiful. Fantastic. Wait. And as always, this information has been taken from the wiki. Fantastic. <laughs> Shall we get started? <laughs> we shall after that mess of a word. That's all right. I hear words are hard. Yes. <laughs> so we start off, as Kilo was telling us, with a triple homicide with Starscream and Bearcrade four hours at the scene of the incident trying to figure out what has happened. Theories on who done it at this point in time, Kilo? No idea. I know they tried to make it look like Starscream because the character... Uh, like they show some like their hands and like forearms with holding the, the two pistols and they, they're kind of like like whitish in color. And then the next panel, we have Starscream that has whitish forearms. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think it was Starscream. <laughs> so, uh, the generic arms. Yeah. So I wasn't I wasn't sure uh, who, who did it at this point. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, revisiting back and forth, flipping from that image to the, the to the very end. I won't spoil it until we get there. But uh, there are some statements said that kind of don't add up. <laughs> yeah, they don't add up quite. But we'll we'll get there eventually. We'll get there eventually. So, Computron, what are your thoughts on Optimus arriving on scene and deciding taking matters into his own hands and taking a stroll down the Decepticon ghetto? And do you ever feel like uh, the Autobots are like an allegory for something? Yeah. Yep. So, I don't know. It was kind of interesting because like one of the scenes Livio Ramondelli was really good at drawing here was uh, when the Decepticons were pulling in and it kind of looked like he was amongst like the Walking Dead kind of scene. Yeah. yeah. And uh, one thing I want to point out is probably like one of my favorite things in this uh, specific issue is I think page 11? Is where you see like this, and it's like a, it's very metaphorically uh, drawn, uh, where Starscream is reaching down to give uh, Optimus like a, you know, looking like Optimus's angel saving grace, like that. I, you can yes. definitely get that vibe from this. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say that too. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we we don't Starscream's no angel. It's more like making a deal with the devil. He's yeah, like, yeah, exactly. It looks like <laughs> Lucifer in the sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I do like that the first people that kind of approached him, I kind of want to call them the Fire Cons. Is like what? Uh, yeah, that, is. that is their. I think that is their name, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, and they were the first to approach him, and like I think uh, one of them even shoots a fireball at him, and then all of a sudden the Subdecons just starting closing on him. Yeah, it's a very powerful scene too, because. The Decepticons, now that Cybertron is united, right? But the Decepticons, like all the bots still hold grudges against the Decepticons, so they're not finding any work. Other bots don't really want them near them at all. So they're they're kinda like kinda like what you said, zombies, just mindless walking around trying to hopefully find something to sustain them. And and that message is very like is very in your face in these images. Yeah, it makes you feel very bad about the Decepticons. Like they they've had the worst luck. Yeah. And I want to also point out when Starscream is saving Optimus from this scene of events, that Starscream is kind of mocking him on Optimus's lack of flying mode. And we get this theme about staying grounded. Uh, Optimus will say it repeatedly through throughout the comic, and it'll kind of bring everything full circle to staying grounded. And double meaning being both on the ground and mind, body and mind, if that makes sense. Staying grounded. Yeah. A lot of metaphors. Yes. Which kind of makes Starscream's ego kind of pop in this uh, page where he looks like an angel. Yeah. 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 That's so good. Walkins continues his chase because mid-flight he sees someone that could be a suspect and begins chasing him. And I enjoy the suspect running and says, guys, guys, Optimus freaking Prime is after me. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Freaking Prime. 
Yes, freaking Parham. The comedy ends very shortly because his friends are murdered. Yep. And, it's, and, and then he's murdered eventually. Not by Optimus, but by our mystery murderer, which we still at this point do not know who it is. Dun, dun, dun. Thoughts on the Infernus bullets Sandstorm talks about during their investigation. You know, the one that buries into your circulatory system and overloads your spark and burns you up from the inside. The one that he knows so much about and is so into, you know, into intellectual about the subject. Yeah. He used to be a wrecker, so he's got to know, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it doesn't really help his cause, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, I thought... Well, Autobots, there is no Autobot on Decepticon or Autobot on Autobot violence. Uh, that's, that's... <laughs> we shall see. Uh, but I, I thought those bullets were very interesting. So, uh, I feel like there, there's an example out there I can't really remember right now, but I feel like there's I've I've read or seen somewhere there there were like also like tracking bullets where like they would track your heat signature and stuff like that. And but these ones kind of like once they enter your system, they'll search for your spark through there. So I thought yeah. they were very interesting, very cool idea. Yeah, very scary too. Yeah, yeah, burning from the inside out. I'd rather go outside in. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I, both does not sound good. Both does not sound good. <laughs> so, who, where does this technology come from? Inspiration, because they do talk about there's a specific group of cons. The fire cons. Fire cons. Yeah, I hear they're a fiery bunch. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, they can produce flames from their body so they were studied and they the decepticon re-engineered how they function into bullets and that's how kind of the i heard they're a blast to hang out with sorry i'm trying mm. my best here yeah <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of fire in these comics you know speaking of hot stuff let's tune in for an ad break <laughs> uh you spun that around i, I can spin anything around Let's play Guess That Con. Hey, Onyx, what do you have there? Garbage O's. They are fantastic. Can I have some? Of course you can. They have all your daily minerals and energon you will need throughout the day, all jam-packed into a delicious breakfast cereal. I can't wait to try some. You can find Garbage O's at your local Autobot factory, or if you know a bot named Swindle. If purchasing a Garbage O's product, you are therefore agreeing to the following terms and conditions. Garbage O's is not responsible for any turbo mice found in products. There are no refunds or exchanges. Oh, Primus, I forgot my faceplate was still on. It's Blitzwing! I also want to point out, I love the art during the fight scenes. It's just oh, gorgeous. Yeah. It, it looks great. It's there's a lot of reflection. There's a lot of color. There's a lot of vibrancy. It's it's absolutely beautiful. And I also enjoy the chaotic fight scenes between the Dinobots, another fiery group of bots. Wow, that's a lot of words for bots. And the fire cons. So there, you can imagine there's a lot of fire as things get heated up. <laughs> I guess you have to fight fire with fire. Hey, there he got one. He did it. You get a rod start. He got one. I, you get a rod start. I remember the the day where I started making jokes and you were like, I'm going to leave the podcast. <laughs> but here you are. Embracing here, us. Let, see, last, <laughs> well, last know, comic well, thing well, we were well, talking well, about was well, that well, personality well, tick, and I think you've infected me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thoughts on the fight scenes? Uh, they're they're gorgeous. They're really well made. Uh, I thought they actually were put offline because one of them gets impaled by Slug's horns. Yeah, uh, and I'm like, whoa, okay, they're 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 out. So. They're, that's it and then the next panel is like oh no they they we healed them they're okay they're just in jail and i'm like oh okay <laughs> well kalo i remember you saying no one actually dies yeah that is true i don't know why i was surprised. armor except for the ones that died earlier you know <laughs> yeah except the many cons they, they suffer the most <laughs> You gotta stop having favorites i'm gonna have a campaign violence against many cons we don't stand for that <laughs> Computron, what are your thoughts on Prime deciding to blame Slug for the murders? 
I really like that. Uh, so <laughs> this kind of go, goes back to where we uh, forgot what comic it was, where we're kind of uh, it, it was uh, Dark, Dark Cybertron, where we kind of see this deconstruction of Optimus in the sense of he's not being that good person that we thought he was. Like he left Bumblebee and now he's blaming Slug for the murders because, you know, for the glory of trying to keep things in prosperity. Yeah, it's definitely a different side of Optimus. We have not seen and we kind of slowly see him throughout up to this point devolve into this aggressive solving things with his fists and pointing fingers first and not asking any more questions. He's definitely definitely turning back into Ryan Pax. Yeah, during his cop thing. days, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I'm here for it. Give me another prowl. You're here for it? No! Oh, yeah, no, two prowls. He used to be an officer, so give bad, me give me bad kill. No. Where's my give, me, give me punchy prime. <laughs> Where's the squirt bottle? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this diluted Shannix is probably good enough. <laughs> yeah. I really I really like that interaction between Optimus and Slug and Optimus just kind of getting tired of all all the things that are happening, kind of like lashing out and, you know, still telling Slug of all the things he's done. So he's still kind of like, uh, he's not like exempt from anything. He's just as worse as the Decepticons at this point. So, listeners, if you disagree with Killbyte, <laughs> please leave a comment yeah. below. And if you're on Team Onyx and Computron is right, hey, again, yeah, again, Megatron is turning good, Optimus is turning evil. Let's see what happens. You know, the new Decepticon rise. <laughs> okay, Kill. Thoughts <laughs> on uh, Barricade, a Decepticon who decided to leave his sigil behind for good of the Cybertronians, becomes a cop that wants to protect everyone. This. Uh, I'm sensing a theme with a lot of the Decepticons here. They don't want any more war. At least the ones that are on Cybertron. They don't want to fight. They will actually want to be good guys. I'm also seeing a similar opposite theme with Autobots, where they're the ones that just can't get over it. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a it's good the old point. switcheroo. Good. The good guys become bad, the bad guys become good. Good thing to point out, because now... <laughs> yeah, well, like... I just noticed that. I don't know. I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> oh, no. Eventually, we find out who done these murders. All of these deaths were caused by... Sandstorm. 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 Red, I mean, orange-handed. <laughs> I got that dun, one. Dun, dun. You mean... Do, 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 do. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Thoughts on this development? Because I've noticed, uh, like I said before, like the Autobots are kind of being the ones that can't let the war go. They're holding these grudges. They're killing bots. Decepticons and Autobots alike because they can't differentiate between the two anymore. And uh, the the most of the Cybertrons, Cybertronians doing the murder at this point at the end of the war are bots like Prowl, Chromia, Sandstorm, I feel like there's one more. But what are your thoughts? And why why do you think Sandstorm was doing this? Probably lost it. You know, the war takes a toll. And now that it's over, you've, all these years you've been fighting and looking somebody to fight. Now that the war is over, you're still fighting, but you're kind of fighting with yourself. You also have to point out he's an ex-wrecker, right? This yeah. is what wreckers are born to do. Yeah. They're so the it, war-bred kind of bots. Yeah. So they kind of like hinted with the whole, all the knowledge and everything he had yeah. to it. So it was kind of like, uh, you could see it coming if you're paying attention. Like uh, the knowledge of all the things he had and then how the killer kept escaping. Like there was a point where like only a flyer could get up to this point or only a truck could drive through this. So there had to be a triple changer. It was yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's just some some soldiers can't let go of the past. But I I, I kind of kind of understand that though, because Decepticons did a lot of murdering, and you know, are you supposed to just let that the war's over? But you're supposed to just let that happen, and it's just gonna you know, it's just still that conflict and. Yeah, it's a it's a difficult question to address. Yeah, well, like I said, better sweet and short, but it was a good who done it. You know, not my favorite uh, of the comics, but it's, I'm gonna give this one like a four. Kilo, 
Yeah, I'll I'll follow up with a also a four. Uh, like I really liked the whole Optimus kind of losing it and like lashing out at Slug. I thought that was very interesting and like because we've always seen him very calm and now like I feel like the the war's over, but now he feels like he has to atone for everybody and every bot that he's been in command for in a way. And uh, I really like that. The who done it was interesting, but like some of the Sandstorm talking kind of like spoiled it. You kind of like noticed it was him. Uh, yeah, but other than, uh, show off a little bit too, which kind of yeah, kind of gave it away. You gotta be smart, kids. You gotta be smart. <laughs> oh, don't don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do but, murder. No, don't do that. Don't listen to Onyx. But uh, yeah, just a four. Stay out of murder, kids. Stay out of murder. Uh, that's a good number to land on. I think I would also give it a four. Wonderful, beautiful art all around. The story, I would agree. Yeah, there's a little bit. It does shine light on what's going on between Autobots and Decepticons, right? The It's not all honky-dory. Is that the word? Honky-dory or something? Yeah, yeah. Happy, happy good time. It's not like that. It's not like that, right? There's still the aftermath of the four million war. Uh, the... The weirdness with Optimus, I don't know if, like, we almost went zero to 60 with him going to, like, bad cop. So I think a four. Four is good. But listeners, what do you think of these comics? How many Rod Stars would you give it? Let us know by leaving a comment below. We have no new emails today, but if you would like to get in contact with us, you can send us an email at swervesbarpodcast at gmail.com. That's S-W-E-R-V-E-S-B-A-R podcast at gmail.com are you two ready for transformers combiner wars yes ready give me the big bots bring give me, me the, the big giant boys bot. let them <laughs> fight let them fight but Kilo, you have something you would like to say wouldn't you i do yes uh i started streaming over on the uh website called twitch.tv uh, and uh you can find me on the said website uh, under Kilobyte Prime. I started streaming some Lego Star Wars. Now I shifted over to Transformers Battlegrounds and you can catch me live at 8 p.m. Pacific time because that's when the signal reaches Earth uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I hope to see you there. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing it with your friends and subscribing. If you want to help out the show even further, we have a Patreon. All the proceeds will go towards supporting the show and keeping the lights on. Of course, we have some tiers that offer other forms of gratitude, such as several 3D files and access to our Discord channel. And as always, we hope you are staying safe out there. Thank you so much for listening. Till all are one. Till all are one. Till all are one. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Swerves Bar Podcast. You can also find us on Twitter at Swerves Bar. If you are interested in more content, try checking out the spinoff D&D series Transform Rollout. The first season, Rise of the World Killers, is completely out now. Let us tune in for a preview now. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have the most glorious <laughs> punch. <laughs> you got a natural 20. I crack my knuckles. <laughs> All right, you you describe this scene. You're going to tell us how this goes down. Yeah. <laughs> she cracks her knuckles. She's tired. She wants to save her friends. She's ready for to, to give the seeker the night. <laughs> Fascinating. There's also a YouTube channel with bonus content with a link provided below. And if you are so inclined, you can support us on Patreon where you can get even more bonus content such as several 3D files and access to their Discord. Links will be provided below. And transmission.